Hello, bonjour, konnichiwa, marhaba, yakwe, and hola. Welcome to our virtual city life recap, where you're going to have the opportunity to learn from 19 different city departments on how they work and operate. You're going to have the opportunity to also see how you can get connected and make a difference within our community. So, if you're interested in also participating in an in-person event, we offer them in fall and also in the spring. You can find us at www.cityofdubuque.org backslash city life. So without further ado, let's begin. Um, to start out, I am the director of finance and budget. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a Galena, Illinois native. I moved to Dubuque in 1996 when I started attending Loris College, College, where I graduated with a degree in accounting. Um, my background is I have five years in banking. Um, after that, I did seven years in public accounting. I worked for a public accounting firm called I Bailey, where I specialized in governmental audits. So that's where my love of government comes from. Um, I had the opportunity of going into many cities and counties across Iowa, um, you know, meeting with the staff in each of those uh, local governments. And, you know, I got to the point where I had kids and wanted to stop traveling and wanted to get involved in my city. So um, that's when the position of the budget director came open uh, and I applied for it and uh, got the job. So uh, I have been with the city of Dubuque for 15 years. Uh, of that 13 years, I served as budget director. And the last two years, I have been the director of finance and budget. So finance and budget used to be separate departments. And then two years ago, they were combined. So um, I went from supervising one person to supervising about 21. So it's been a pretty big adjustment, but it's exciting. Uh, the department is constantly changing and we're doing new things. So um, it's been a great challenge. Um, other things about me, my hobbies are camping. I do quilting and sewing and gardening. And when we're not in a pandemic, I love going to live music shows. I like a variety of music. So if it's live, I like to listen to it. Um, and the photo is on the screen. So that's my family, my husband, Sean, uh, my oldest daughter, Caitlin, who is a freshman at UNI, and then my younger daughter, Callie, who is a junior at Dubuque Senior High School. And then my standard poodle, Ruby, she's my newest, youngest, uh, most spoiled child that we got during the pandemic. So that's a little about me. And then I'll just go into my presentation here. So. Um, the agenda, I won't talk in length about the city council goals and priorities because uh, the city manager touched on that, but we'll talk about how your property tax bill is split, how the city's budget is funded, where your city taxes go, and some cool online tools that we have. So we have a budget simulation and a taxpayer receipt that you can run. Um, so we'll hopefully get you to check that out. And then we'll go over what the finance and budget department does. Um, a budget overview, and talk about the inter interactive web tools that we have, where to find more information, and how you can get involved in the finance department. So starting out, this is the finance organization chart. Um, we handle a variety of things in our department. So we have everything from accounting to utility billing, um, and then we also have the budget function. So this is the staff that makes up those functions and I'll talk about those a little bit more as we go through this presentation. So the finance department mission just summed up in one sentence is we provide accurate and transparent financial reporting an informed budget process, which includes stakeholder participation and customer focused utility billing services. We do have an equity plan in finance. So we have been working on budgeting for equity in our budget process. We do a lot of training with the city departments on how to budget for equity. We work pretty closely with the human rights uh, department. And um, so in this past budget year, we did some scoring and identifying priority equity projects that were submitted by departments. And for uh, outcomes, we look at the number of equity projects funded 
and the outcomes of those projects funded. Um, we're also starting the process of looking at our vendors and procurement process. So uh, that group is just uh, kicking off that process. Uh, we will be identifying racial equity issues reviewing data on outcomes by race, and then developing a plan with community engagement on that process. So this slide shows the services that uh, the Finance and Budget Department provides. So we have financial services, so that's your typical accounting and payroll. We do the payroll for the entire city. We also handle purchasing. So we're assisting uh, with citywide bids and purchasing and requests for proposals. Um, risk management, we handle general liability and property insurance out of our department. Grants, uh, because we handle the city's annual audit, we are the central hub of all grant reporting. Treasury, we're managing all the city's uh, funds, you know, accounts, uh, all the, items that go along with that. And then of course, we're doing the annual audit and the required state reporting. Under utility services, we bill for water, sanitary sewer, stormwater, and refuse. So those are all billed on one bill. Uh, we provide prompt and courteous customer service. We establish service for customers who move here. We manage a customer database that has about 24,000 customers. Uh, during the pandemic, we've Handled all of our customer service online, um, but we will we are preparing to open to the public on May 17th. So we're excited to have customers back in the building. Um, we recently did a remodel of the department to fit everyone after the department uh, consolidation. So um, it'll be exciting to actually get to use our cashier windows and see everyone again. Under budget, uh, we just wrapped up our budget process for fiscal year 22, which starts July 1st. So the budget staff um, helps departments prepare and develop their operating capital budgets. We develop the budget reporting guidelines. Um, we also handle the city's debt issuances. So we are actually getting ready to sell some debt. Um, the sale is on May 3rd, so we're refunding about $30 million in bonds, um, and we will realize about almost $3 million in interest savings by doing that because the interest rates are so much better than when we issued them eight years ago. And then we have some new projects that we'll be issuing for. Um, and then we also do compliance with local and state reporting. And then we monitor and uh, do reporting on department operating capital budgets. Uh, Mike already covered the policy agenda, but I just want to highlight it again because it is the foundation for the city's budget process. So um, we do uh, kick off the budget process after the council has done their goal setting, and then departments work on uh, submitting budget uh, items to support the city's goals and priorities. So how is your property tax bill split? So there are actually uh, five individual taxing bodies that set their own tax levy. So when you receive your property tax bill from the county, it's not. Sorry, Jenny, I think we lost you. Or is that me? Oh, I think I'm frozen. Oops. It says she's muted. Oh, okay. Let's. Let me try and troubleshoot over here. In the, meantime, in the meantime, enjoy you too as we get our technical support going up. Let's see.
I think she, I see that she's reconnecting. Just gonna give her some time. Sorry, that was a commercial. I apologize. My my call dropped for some reason. Not no. not the best night for technology for me. <laughs> no worries. Um, You're good to go. Okay, so going back to the how your property tax bill is split. So again, there's five taxing bodies. Um, the Dubuque Community School District is actually the largest um, taxing body that the most of your property taxes go to at just over 45%. The city is second at about 31%, and then there's Dubuque County at 18, uh, Northeast Iowa Community College at almost 3%, and then Independent makes up 2%. So that would be the city and county assessor, for example, in that category. Um, and then the other graph just shows based on an average homeowner's uh, house, which is just under $150,000, what that looks like. So you know, $1,100 of that would go to the school district, about $769 to the city and the county just under $450. So um, when you're paying your taxes, it's going to more than one taxing body. Uh, looking at how the city's budget is funded, uh, this chart represents the operating budget and it's actually the city's adopted Fiscal year 2022 budget, which will begin July 1st, 2021. So the total adopted operating budget is just over $141 million. And you can see from the chart, local taxes makes up 31%. So that category includes more than just property taxes. It also includes the 1% local option sales tax, hotel motel tax, uh, road use tax, and our gaming taxes that we receive from the two casinos in Dubuque. Uh, next largest category is utilities at 29%. So the city's utilities must be self-supporting, which means their fees charged must cover their expenses. So the examples of some utilities that we have is sanitary sewer, water, stormwater, parking, and refuse. And then the other large category is operating receipts at 20%. So we have many departments that charge uh, for services such as ambulance, uh, business licenses, animal licenses, and inspection fees. Moving on to the city's capital budget. So this is the budget um, for infrastructure improvements, or um, there's also some large equipment in our capital budget. So our total adopted capital budget that begins July 1st, 2021 is just over 49 million. Um, the difference here is you'll see a bonds and debt category at 28%. The city only issues debt for capital projects. Um, we do not issue any debt for operations. Um, that's a city policy. Uh, we do have local taxes of 20% funding capital budget. So that's actually including the local option sales tax and road use tax that is allocated for capital projects. And then there's federal funds and state funds in there. So examples of federal funds the city receives is a community development block grant. Um, we also receive the HUD lead grant. We have some federal transportation, uh, federal transit authority. We have a HUD resiliency grant that's being used on the B Branch Creek restoration project and federal aviation administration. So looking at where your property taxes go, um, actually 52% of what is paid to the city of Dubuque goes to public safety. Um, fi fire is just under 20%, police is 30%. The other category here makes up 13.9% and that includes the city manager's office, planning services, city clerk, city council, finance and budget, information services and building services. Um, the chart's a little hard to read. It was difficult to get that to all fit. 
Uh, we do have some interactive online tools that you can check out on cityofdubuque.org finance. And then there's links to some of the budget items that are listed here. So there is the dollars and cent brochure that uh, city ma the city manager pointed out in his presentation. We also have a cool online application called Open Budget. Um, so if you go into that, you can see live data on our adopt or our amended budget compared to actual, and you can drill down by department and by activity. We also have an open expense interactive tool, and I, I like to refer to it as open checkbook. So you can actually go in and look at payments the city has made all the way down to the vendor. Um, we are required by Iowa Code to post our revenue and expenditures monthly. So those are also out on our webpage. And we also have our comprehensive annual financial reports um, also referred to as our annual audit out on our webpage. Um, we do have a very cool budget simulation tool called the Balancing Act Budget Simulation. Um, it's a very interactive way to learn about the budget process. And it allows you, if you want to, to rebalance the budget to how you think the city council should spend the city's money. And you can leave comments um, and you know share with your friends uh, the simulation tool. As part of that, you can also run your own taxpayer receipt based on the taxable value of the home that you own. And you can also estimate your local option sales tax based on three simple questions that you can answer and it'll produce a receipt by service of how, you know, where your taxes go, you know, whether it's going to police, the library or recreation programs. So that's pretty neat to check out too. Um, and then in utility billing, we have the WaterSmart portal. So if you're not current users, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, you sign up for the portal and you can sign up for alerts on there. It will, it can alert you if your water usage is higher than normal. It can help you detect leaks. Um, it's a very, very cool tool to use. Um, there's all kinds of other things in there. You can make uh, payments online, um, but it's a neat thing to check out. And then the last thing I want to talk about is more ways to get involved. So the finance department does have an investment oversight advisory board. So the purpose of that board is to review and advise on the city's investment policy and look at the performance of um, what we're doing internally in the finance department with the city's money. And then we also have investment managers that you know invest the city's money in um, investments allowed by Iowa Code and our investment policy. It's a five member board with three year terms and it only meets quarterly. Uh, currently we have two vacancies. So I, I would really love if we could get uh, some more applicants for that. Um, and you can apply on the city's website, um, cityofdubuque.org uh, slash boards. Um, but it would be great if we could get a couple more people to fill those. Uh, it is actually very interesting for those who serve on the uh, investment oversight advisory board. Every meeting we have one of our investment managers do a presentation and I always learn a lot through those. So even if you're not super investment savvy, it's a great way you know, to learn about the city's investments. Uh, we do have budget input, input opportunities. Um, again, you can submit budget comments using the Balancing Act tool. Um, if you go to our website um, on the budget page, we always have an online uh, but budget input form. And then when we're in the budget process, there are budget input uh, budget meetings. We have seven total and they're usually held in February and March. And I would encourage you to stay updated. You can sign up for budget notices at cityofdubuque.org notify me. So anytime, for example, we post new things on the website in regard to the budget or we have uh, engagement opportunities coming up, you would get notified for those things. Uh, neighborhood associations, we present at most of the neighborhood associations every year, um, usually in the fall. Uh, so I would just suggest, you know, organize with your neighborhood to, to develop budget requests so you could bring those to those meetings. Um, and as far as employment and internships, uh, right now we don't have any vacancies, um, but, you know, check back. Our vacancies are always listed on the website uh, on the 
employment page. Uh, we do have three intern positions in the finance department, but those are currently filled. And with that, I'm to the questions part of the presentation, so I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So before the questions start, I just want to say that Jenny and her team, like budget, <laughs> I, I for sure, you know, if I, if I was ever even doing it, everything would be thrown off. So I absolutely commend her and her team for how much work that they've done just to be able to keep everything so aligned because it's, it is not easy. Um, so I'm always grateful for the work that you do. Thank you. Also, I've had great opportunities of presenting with Jenny, so she's awesome. <laughs> yes, yep, I'm getting ready to present at a national conference coming up, so. <laughs> Best of luck, you got this. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? And actually, I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, in regards to like the neighborhood associations, um, how much money are they, how, maybe not so much of how do the neighborhood associations work, but is there like any allocations or money that go towards those that community members could be able to do use, utilize to improve like the area? Maybe it's like if there's lights or something um, that maybe some uh, that's out there. Uh, yes, so there's annual um, allocations given to neighborhood groups through a neighborhood grant program that they can apply for. So a lot of times those funds are used for example neighborhood cleanups or maybe they want to have an event um, so they you know need money for you know food or like kids bounce, bounce houses or things like that. So yes, there's um, annual allocations for that and um, you know, our neighborhood specialist, Geraldine Gerald O'Connor, retired, but hopefully we'll be able to fill the position there that would oversee that process. But I think in the meantime, it's handled in the city manager's office by uh, assistant city manager, Corey Burbach. Awesome. So that means each of you within uh, your neighborhoods, there's ways that you can make a difference. Um, if there's some ideas that you even wanted to worry, if say boards and commissions is something maybe you're not just quite ready there yet. Neighborhood associations, great way for you to get involved and some uh, resources that you can use to uh, put on for other community members within your area. So that's awesome. And this is the balance uh, simulation, correct? Yeah, so I, I just pulled this up. Um, again, you can access it from the city's website, but I just wanted to show that it's very user friendly, it's visual, and you can learn as much as you want to about the city's budget. So it starts out balanced. Um, and then anywhere you see an arrow, you can expand. So for example, under arts, parks and recreation, you see the individual budgets, how much is budgeted there. And then these little more information buttons you can click into and learn more information. And then you can go under more details and learn even more. And if you wanted to adjust and you know rebalance the budget, you could, for example, increase recreation. For example, maybe you want to add money to recreation programs. You can see after I did that, it says I'm in a deficit. So the city is required to adopt a balanced budget, which is the same requirement in the simulation. So in order to submit this budget, then I'd either have to decrease another program to get it to balance, or I would have to go over to the revenue side. And for example, one of the revenues over here is taxes. And I could expand this and property tax um, is in here. And I could increase that to get it to balance. And then once it shows that you are in balance, or in this case, I have a slight surplus, then this budget could be submitted. Um, there's also opportunities in here to add comments. So um, you can see the little comment bubble. You just click on that, um, insert a comment, and hit save. And that information will uh, 
go through the application. So there's a, in a, there's a whole analytics suite behind this tool and it captures all the information. However, it is anonymous. So you, if you want to, you know, submit your name at the end, you can, but you do not have to. And then we just collect the data. I'd like to say this is, uh, I'd like to say this is one of the more creative governmental website aspects I've ever seen. Hats off. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah, we're really, we were really excited to launch it. We launched it, I think, two years ago. And you, we've been trying to market it, but it's been very difficult during the pandemic since we can't get out and present to community groups, which is the best way to market it. But we hope to get back to doing that in the next um, late summer, this coming fall, hopefully. Well, I'm a retired mainframe programmer, so my kudos are just that much more impressed by you folks. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. And also feel free, uh, I'm gonna probably share this as well, but uh, any of the information that you're you're also got learning as far as the um, with the program and things like that, feel free to share that um, on your social media or you know when you're at Thanksgiving, you know, you could just tell everybody stop. I have an awesome, you know game that we're going to play. We're going to try and budget, you know, balance the budget out or um, here's where we're all going to uh, sign these applications and be uh, be part of a board and commissions. I think that's a great one right there. Um, but share this out so that way we can get more of our your friends family uh, engaged in this so they can see just how cool like these things are out there that if they have questions like, well, why is money being spent over there? Well, here's an opportunity for them to give it a chance, you know, and of how, what they would do and how that would look like, so. Um, I'll just briefly show how the estimated taxpayer receipt uh, looks. Again, it's accessed through the city's website on the budget page. The first section is to um, get some information to look up tables on spending habits. So these don't have to be exact. And again, it's anonymous. So this is not recorded anywhere. So I'm just gonna put in um, 75,000 for annual income. I'll put in an age. And then if you own your own home, this is the part that would calculate um, where your taxes are going. And if you click on this little more information button, it's, you can click on click here and it's gonna bring you to the Beacon website where you can look up your assessed value. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna randomly pick an address here. Hopefully it's a residential one. You'd put in your address and click search. Oh, now it's the school district, sorry. So it, if this was a residential, then you would just page, page down to the taxation section and that's where you can find your taxable value. Um, if indeed I had picked a residence, that would be here. And then you would go back to the taxpayer receipt. Um, so let me do that. And you'd put in your taxable value. So I'm gonna put in 79,000, that's right around what the taxable value is of an average home. And then you just click view your estimated tax receipt. So it will populate a receipt based on your information. So based on that, you can see culture and recreation, about $221 goes there. And then it breaks it down far, farther by what uh, departments are fall under that. So recreation, library, you know, arts and cultural affairs. Um, it also breaks down capital projects. And then of course the biggest category is public safety, which it breaks down between police, fire, E911 and general safety. If you go to the bottom, it shows you your total. And then if you click on the little more information, you can actually break that apart. So that is made up of the local option sales tax about $271. And then the property tax based on your home um, is in here as well. So uh, kind of a neat tool just to see, you know, where your city portion of taxes is going within uh, the city government. 
That is really cool, Jenny. Thank you for sharing all of that. That is super duper cool. Um, I had a question. Um, when I know that uh, Mike said that the um, new hiring um, is on a freeze right now, is there a plan of when that will be unfrozen? Sure. So the positions that are frozen are the new positions that were added to the fiscal year 22 budget process. So I think he talked a little bit about those. Um, so the plan would be to, we are waiting until November of 2021 to review our revenues. And the big thing that happens in November is we receive a reconciliation payment for local option sales tax. And that just helps us know then we'll know at that time how much local option sales tax is coming in and if it's on budget. And if it would be on budget, then we would go ahead and unfreeze those positions and start the hiring process. Awesome question. Any others? I'm playing with the um, <clears throat> with the simulator that you shared with us with dollar and cents, and so that explains why my taxes just went up. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah, <laughs> it's all going to the arts and culture now, Tama. Um, so um, when it says a percentage of all operating expenses under an activity, is that the percentage of the total operating budget? Is that how to read that? Uh, I'm trying to. It, it, it yeah, it looks Sorry. like it is. It is yeah. Okay, I was going to say I'm 100, not. 147 million is operating expenses for 2021. Oh yes, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then, what I was looking at was the percentage of that 147 million. Thank you. Uh, yep. Very cool. Of course, Thank that, you. Uh, making those changes is just for the instance it doesn't give you much in the way of input on how likely you are to be re-elected after you raise this taxes so high <laughs> that is correct um <laughs> it's a, it's as realistic as you want to make it when you rebalance the budget oh this could be fun <laughs> Jenny, I am um, a part of the North End Neighborhood Association, and um, I will um, recommend that they come and have you talk about these different um, ways that people can get involved. Um, They're always looking for speakers. And I, I had heard of this, I think, through like, I don't know, a text message or an email or something from the city, but just to like actually see it. Um, makes it much more fun and exciting. And this might actually be something fun for, I don't know what age group that this would be appropriate for like in the schools, but this could be a fun way to engage like not only like social studies or, or I don't know, uh, or um, like with obviously with math, but that just seems like a fun thing to do, um, you know, to yeah. have get involved with that. Agreed, yeah. And I, I normally do present at the North End neighborhood, but um, I, I don't think they were doing in-person presentations this past fall, but I'm not sure about that. But yeah, hopefully this fall we'll be back out. I just want to reiterate that Kathy just described your budget budget presentation as fun. <laughs> Thank you. I don't I don't hear that a lot, but I think it's fun. It's you know very challenging and exciting and um I do have to say it's exciting, you know, once we get a five year capital improvement plan adopted and you start to see some of those projects um, come to life in the community. It's, um, I guess it's very satisfying to see that process work. That has to be really exciting um, to see such fruit from all your hard work. And the reason I always look for fun and exciting things is I was homeschooling my kids because of the pandemic this year. They're now back in school. But um, I just, there's all of these, as I, one thing I learned that was a benefit and a joy from homeschooling was that I got to learn about new things along with my kids. And so this is one thing that maybe one day, not today, because they're only in like 
first grade and kindergarten and almost three, but this could be something fun to, to do like a, what would you like? What do you think is important for our city to do? Right, yeah. I would also recommend too, when you make adjustments that, you know, you put in some comments, that especially if you're intending, you know, for example, an increase to go to a certain program, it's very helpful if comments are entered because those do come through um, with the budget changes that are made. So definitely encourage for uh, to play around with it, try something if you uh, with those comments, because again, another way of getting uh, engaged and involved and you may be able to you may come up with something that was maybe not thought about and all of a sudden you know it could be that difference maker too so i think that's pretty cool did you know there was so many ways of getting engaged involved and make a difference look at that <laughs> all right any further right. oh sorry go ahead kathy i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you um jenny i did want to say i it was only uh I think we didn't start meeting as a neighborhood association until, was it November? I don't know. All the days blur together, so I can't remember, but we have had a few. So um, yeah, that would definitely be something we would enjoy if it works out. Hopefully nothing goes haywire again, um, that we could have you come out in the fall. That would be really fun. Yeah, I agree. I look forward to getting back out and, you know, doing some presentations, so. I would happy to I would be very happy to do that. All right, if there are no further questions, thank you so much, Jenny.